Linden's kind of been doing the same thing lately, right? Where I feel like he's been purposely flirting with like the council culture in the sense of like, keep mentioning it, keep mentioning how you're being silenced, keep mentioning how the channel is not seeing any growth and how they're not in the algorithm. And I think recently I saw on the T5K subreddit, they've clearly been editing out some of the swear words and the episodes to maybe help them when it comes to monetization and blah, 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 blah. But I felt like it's all been a bit of a cynical um, attempt or a bit of a deliberate attempt. Lots of them sort of cynical, a very deliberate, um, you know, lacking in subtlety attempt to purposely try to get cancelled in the hopes that it'll give you something to talk about so you could kind of be like a cancel culture warrior type of thing, right? Because, you know, these comedians kind of did it in the, in, the, in the beginning when they had reason to. I think a lot of them were really getting cancelled and were maybe getting silenced. But nowadays, I feel like cancel culture has become its own little micro economy where where some people will go out of their way to have very contrarian, very kind of, you know, far right, very extreme points of view that don't line up with the platform that they're on. Again, it's no problem. Be far right, be whatever you want to be. I'm all for, I'm like, I'm all for free speech, but I'm also all for the other person deciding that they don't like what you, they hear from you. So, you know, you can, you're allowed to say what you want, but if the person reacts a certain way, you can't then start crying. So, these comedians have realized that there's an economy, though, in crying about cancel culture and crying about getting canceled and crying about being silenced. And I feel like they don't accept the almost inevitable end of that, you know, kind of battle where essentially the platforms are wrong, especially if they're more left leaning, they're most likely going to. Hey, big up Stinger Goo. Appreciate you for the $2 super chat, brother. Baba is trying to reboot his career. Exactly, Stinger Goo. And, that, and instead of rebooting his career with just. You know what, man? This is this is kind of like. This is where I kind of get deep into this fucking low cow shit. Haven't you realized all low cows do this? All low cows have the ability to never ever internalize why they are currently failing or stalling. It's always somebody else's fault. They always kind of pin it on this mythical other, whether it's the trolls, whether it's the networks, whether it's cancel culture, whether it's just whatever. It's never them. So instead of just maybe internalizing why you're flopping and why you're fucking up and trying to be a better person and put out better content that connects with more people or your fans are going to like, let's just kind of make it a cancel culture thing that we're fighting against. Anyway, long story short, let me get back to my point. What I was basically getting at was that I think a lot of these guys, the thing that really fucking annoys me about the cancer culture thing is that you can cry about cancer culture as much as you want, but if you're being edgy and if you're being contrarian, a contrarian, and if you're spe spewing, you know, espousing or spewing fucking right wing rhetoric, right, and talking points on a very liberal left leaning platform like, you know, maybe you say YouTube is or maybe what Twitter used to be, you have to expect that sooner rather than later, your time will come the end for you will come it just is what it is and i feel like if you're sensible and use it to your advantage you play the whole cancel culture thing you do the whole right wing grift but then you kind of pivot to use that sort of you know hype and that attention to kind of funnel into your rumble or into your kick stuff or into your patreon that's a good way to do it right so then when you eventually do get kicked off of youtube you've got all your fans on these other platforms that are guaranteeing you a certain amount of income guaranteeing you a certain amount of attention in terms of eyes but these guys, fresh and fit, for some reason, they were out here on these live streams, right? Um, wearing fucking KKK hoods, doing a high Hitler salute, um, talking down, especially on black women, right? Which is, you know, crazy nowadays, considering the amount of very loud, vocal black women on black Twitter and black side of social media who will go out of their way to try and cancel you. Look what they did to fucking Kevin Samuels. And when he died, they were all fucking dancing on their grave. They played a very dangerous game. And then when they got canceled, they start crying. They start getting upset. I don't understand it for the life of me. So if you don't know, Fresh and Fit recently got demonetized um, from YouTube. And something that I didn't realize, right? Fresh and Fit allegedly are in the top 10 of the most super chatted um, channels on YouTube. The top 10. I think number one is like, a preacher or td jakes number one is td jakes right a christian preacher super popular over there in america he's come to the uk a few times i used to come i used to see him at my church back in the day so trash and fit were in the top 10 and allegedly they were making sometimes up to forty thousand dollars listen to this they were making up to forty thousand dollars from super chats alone and if you know anything about super chats you'll know that youtube takes 30 percent so youtube demonetizing them even though they're making that much money for them shows you 
that these guys were playing with fire. And in my opinion, considering what happened to Alex Jones, considering how much money Alex Jones was making, he was making like, you know, I think the, uh, what the court records show, was it like in the hundreds of millions or something Alex Jones was making from his, no, let's say tens of hundreds, tens of millions of dollars he was making from his channel, right? on youtube alone when it was monetized and obviously it got kicked off and everything whatever it may be but i think a lot of these guys sure saw the writing on the wall when alex jones got kicked off because alex jones was if not competing completely destroying mainstream media channels like um, you know cnn and all this malarkey on fucking youtube combined on his own right just ranting raving for seven hours so i don't understand why these fucking numb nuts fought if alex jones got cancelled why they didn't ever imagine that they could get sometimes deplatformed demonetized in any way shape or form anyway um fresh and fit got demonetized they're crying about it and i don't understand why let's hear them cry Live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh and Fit Podcast, man. Um, as you guys know, we had a show scheduled earlier with um, Psych with Psych Hacks, but we had to uh, cancel because we got some really, uh, you know, sucky news. Um, crazy news. Yeah, crazy news. Real talk. Yeah. Uh, right now, we're live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Rumble. Um, and guys, I mean... <sighs> Is this the end, bro? Because... Uh... We got some bad news, man. Uh, I mean, when I heard, I was I was shocked because I mean, we love YouTube, man. Yeah, we love streaming. Yeah, and um, at this point, I feel like our whole lives are revolved around streaming and like <laughs> yeah, adding value to, to you know people online. It's just like it won't be the same, bro. Yeah, <laughs> what um, we heard in twenty twenty, guys. Uh, as you guys know, um. I was working for the government, right? I was a special agent of Homeland Security. He worked for, fuck it, Wix. We'll just call it. Yeah. Right? Um, Wix.com, yeah. And, uh, you know, he was a tech support. I was arresting bad guys, etc. I, I just see I just see Z in the chat say, more like we love donations. Yo, I'm. W let's all be honest. We're under no delusion. We're all adults here in the chat, in the stream. Let's be under no delusions. These guys were making money. They knew they were making money. That's why they were just pushing the line and saying crazy shit. My opinion is it doesn't matter if you're making money, if you're only on it to make money, do your thing. But surely you should have some idea of an exit strategy. That's the thing that just baffles me. Like, I don't understand why they never had an exit strategy of like, either I'm going to pivot away before they demonetize me and deplatform me, or in the event that they do, in the eventuality that it does happen, I've got all these other options. They were, from what I've been led to believe, checking stuff on Reddit, reading stuff on Twitter and whatever it may be, some people are saying, this is really crazy, think about this, some people are saying fresh and fit in regards of how viral they were, how successful they were, 90 to 95 of their monthly earnings was through YouTube. And in my opinion, I feel like that's too much. If you're fresh and fit and you say the things that they say, they talk to the guests the way they talk to the guests, the subjects they talk about, you can't have all your fine, all your income, you know, tied up in YouTube. It's just too risky because YouTube, by and large, is more of a left kneeling, left left leaning progressive platform. You are more so aligning with right or right of center ideologies. Eventually, it will come to an end. So I, don't, I can't get why they would put all their eggs effectively in one basket. For me, it's insane. Insane level of like, you know, lack of understanding the climate and their position in it. It's fucking baffling, to be honest. They thought they were untouchable and they legitimately got spanked. We started this podcast. We did our first episode on October 26th, 2020. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, yeah, Chris was there. The apartment was all empty and shit. And, uh, you know, and we had our first podcast, the, the, if you guys go back and watch it, like the, the thing was all zooming in and out and everything else like that. And it was all messed up. It's like and, we're at uh, host club. Yeah, it's, exactly. I saw someone here who said this here, BVD XR. These guys preach about being a man and standing up all this other macho talk. And now they get demonetized and they cry about it. Exactly. Where's the macho resilience? It fucking exactly. BBD XR. That's what I'm talking about. And these guys, legitimately, I think a lot of people on social media are like this. And I feel like sometimes, I don't know if this is like, I don't know if it's like a, a feature or a bug. I'm not too sure if it's a feature or a bug. It's sometimes, no matter how big you, you have to get to a certain level, and then your lack, your lack of like self awareness 
and your lack of like congruency in like the way you've in the way in what you speak about and how you act in your life kind of re- don't line up anymore it just becomes a bit of a game but personally for me having read stuff like you know what's his name um resilient was it book i think it's ralph waldo emerson right that i read years ago um is it waldo emerson let me see if i, I think it's ralph waldo emerson um ralph waldo emerson i think it's it's a book it's basic the title is something about resilience let me see if i can get it up on you on my phone um yo, that's it yeah self-reliance by ralph waldo emerson i read that many many years ago right um when i was kind of you know deep into my fucking bookworm shit and essentially a lot of that book you can kind of boil it down to like extreme ownership I think even Jocko Wilnick speaks about it. And the idea behind it is that if you become successful, it's never all about you, right? It's about these circumstances that kind of led to it. So kind of allowing yourself to be completely humble and always kind of even killed with the success that you get. So you, you become a multi-billionaire. It's never all me. I can never do it about my fans, my family, the circumstances that I was born in, the luck that was afforded to me, blah, blah, blah. And if you become you know, if you go all the way back down and you lose it all, it's also all my fault. But you don't ever, 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 ever sit there fucking crying on fucking, you know, on tea, on whatever, with GoFundMes and shit. You don't fucking sit here whining and complaining that you weren't able to say what the fuck you want. You take all the ownership into it. And I've never understood when it comes to fucking this manosphere space, these macho guys, there's a lot of whining and complaining. They sit on here, they chastise all these fucking young girls and OnlyFans, they talk about them and their lifestyles and shit, and essentially in their own lives, to l- for lack of a certain term, and with all respect intended for my women listeners out there, they are the biggest bitches, right? They complain about all these girls and OnlyFans only being in it for the money, only caring about certain girls that have money, being a high value man, but at their very core, they are B-I-T-C-H-E-S exclamation mark that's what they are at their fucking core because in my opinion if i'm them and i'm making the money they're doing i'm talking about the things i'm talking about i'm diversifying my revenue streams i'm already thinking okay cool um let's sort out a rumble deal let's get this guaranteed money in let's figure out a way of doing a regular show on it that make i basically want to get to a point where my income isn't only all in fucking youtube because that's what people are saying online they're saying they had up to 90 to 95 percent of their overall income was coming from youtube i think that's too much of a disparity you have to kind of you know level out the fucking you know income streams and maybe make them all fucking 30 or something but you can't have 90 percent of your revenue um you know coming in income from youtube and then you're talking about fucking doing higher hitler shit you're chastising black women you're chastising sex workers you're fucking saying crazy shit on there which you can say say what the fuck you want but come on you're in fucking youtube you know what i mean like come on man and I think someone even mentioned it on in the chat. Someone said they fu- they were fucking up. They were fucking around with Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's not edgy anymore, right? He might be a bit right leaning nowadays, but Joe Rogan isn't exactly edgy, right? He's not saying anything super crazy, aside from maybe his stance he took on COVID or whatever it may be, or some stuff he said about Hunter Biden laptops and whatever it may be. But Rogan is pretty run of the mill, really, and they're messing about with his money. If they can mess with Rogan, if they could kick off fucking Alex Jones, the guys, how much money he was making for that platform also, because they take a chunk out of your AdSense, they take a chunk out of your fucking, you know, super chats, which makes sense because they allow you to host on their platform free of charge. I'm not complaining. But if those guys couldn't see, you know, the wood for the trees, then they, they got no nose to blame. In and out. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was literally, camera. yeah. <laughs> uh, but we got it figured out. We got the lighting fixed and, you know, we continue to improve. Uh, Fresh landed some really good guests early on, um, and continues to get us a great guest. And um, and we made hours of content in the streets, TikTok, Patreon. Yeah, you know, many nights, three in the morning, four in the morning. Yeah. Chris was there too. Yeah, while working from, jobs. Yeah. While working jobs. And then uh, and then I'll never forget. Uh, I get an email, November, like, fourteenth. Internal affairs. Hey, we need you to come in for an interview. And I'm like, oh my God, here we go. Right. And I'm working at the government, sitting at my desk, writing up a report, and I see this email. Yeah. And this is 2020 November. And I, uh, you know, <clears throat> I go, uh, you know, I let my supervisor know, hey, 
I gotta go. <laughs> that throat is dry, isn't it? That throat is dry, knowing that. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, the thing that YouTube has make it brutal for them, right? From what I know of being on YouTube and having a monetized channel, usually your your kind of your stats are look are kind of like month delayed, and your income is a month delayed. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. You're probably thinking sometimes if you make the money they're doing, you're probably thinking, yeah, we we sometimes make the, their probably lowest month was maybe ten grand, right? Lowest month, so they're probably thinking they're already thinking six months ahead of time because they oh, the lowest they make is ten. So now all of a sudden, you know, the next six months or whatever it may be, you're not going to make zero from YouTube. It's gonna fucking hurt. So no wonder he's fucking froze dry. <laughs> Up to you know the internal affairs office, right? Because it's not at the same building as us. And, you know, I go over there and they, and they take my phone and I'm like, what the hell? Like, what's going on here? And then, you know, and then they're like, they didn't want to tell me, but they're like, uh, you know, Hey, you know, we're part of an internal investigation. Next day I meet up with the, you know, the special agent in charge and they tell me, Hey, it has to do with your YouTube. And right there it clicked. I was like, wait, wait, hold on. Okay. They probably think that I'm recording videos on my phone. <laughs> like that's what's what it is, which it was a fucking like iPhone six or seven. It was a piece of shit. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> and, uh, what ended up happening is I had to make a really tough decision that month. I remember going back and forth, trying to negotiate, trying to figure out what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, they're like, no, like you have to pick one. You have to either, you're going to be a YouTuber or you can be a special agent homeland, but you're not going to do both. In my opinion, I think picking YouTube over being an, uh, an agent with Homeland Security at his age is legitimately one of the most insane things you could ever do. Because he could have easily worked for the Homeland Security for another 10 years um, or even 20 years and basically did what Mike Baker does, right? That Mike Baker guy, that fucking, you know, that fucking charlatan that comes on fucking Rogan, right? Who used to be, I think, in the CIA or some shit and he's always fucking talking shit. But essentially, he has enjoyed a good part of his career in you know law enforcement or whatever it may be counterintelligence but then when he retired he's now going to enjoy another 20 or 30 years talking about the things he learned about when he was at work or lending his expertise on topics that he knows about based on his previous experience so actually working for the government in those kind of in type, those type of jobs it actually is going to help your youtube the older you are you don't need to quit fucking a, a solid job like that that pays well with good career prospects just to do youtube because youtube's always going to be there there's always going to be a, a crowd of kids a crowd of guys myself included who love to watch fucking you know former you know marines former police officers former agents former you know um fucking detectives talk about their experience working in those fields and lending their ear to certain things that happen in kind of culture so in my personal opinion i think it was an incredibly short-sighted idea anyway to drop homeland security for fresh and fit personally but again i could be wrong there and i had to make that decision i remember you were there yeah we had andrew here and i was like well we got people working for us now. There's people that depend on us. You had to pretty much quit your gig. So I was like, all right, I'm going to resign. And I walked in December 5th, turned in all my stuff. And uh, yeah, I walked away from the from the U.S. government. It was a, it was a good, you know, uh, six-figure job. Uh, it was stable. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. You guys know on my Fed Reacts, you guys see how I talk when I'm, when I'm uh, talking on that channel. And uh, yeah. There we go, Cloud22. Same thing. I'm thinking the same thing too. I, like Cloud20, K20 said, I thought these dudes were millionaires and invested in all that shit. Why are they so worried about YouTube ch channel? You tell me, brother. You tell me. They all took a big game. Fucking Manosphere that. Macho this. I'm a man this. Alpha that. But what? You didn't invest any of that fucking money you're making. You didn't buy a couple of fucking flats and rent them out. You didn't fucking, you know, buy a couple of supercars and let, and start your fucking car leasing agency or a social media fucking agency or something. Like, really, nothing. Like, I can't fucking understand all of this. I don't get it. I don't get this. I really don't understand this. Like, this is what I'm saying, um, BYOJ, right? Dude dropped his cushy gig for, a, a, for a, a fresh and fit and apartment studio. I don't think there's... Think about it this way. If you're working in retail 
or you're working in the service industry or you've got a regular office job right imagine you're like uh, a fucking you're um you're an intern at a law firm somewhere right be before you become an associate whatever that level is right you're not making that much money you might make 30 grand a year or something you're doing your youtube and your youtube's popping up to a bit where it's getting to a point where you're maybe gonna make a lot of money down the way I will be very hesitant to jump straight away to that YouTube full time because I feel like if you're successful on YouTube because your real job is sort of giving you that kind of cachet, that kind of authority to speak about certain things. So imagine if you're like an intern at a law firm, maybe you speak about topics involving, you know, law on your YouTube channel. It's no harm doing that job as long as you can and also doing YouTube on the side. And then when it gets to a point where your YouTube money starts to outstrip what you make in your full-time job, then quitting. That's one thing. But he was a fucking field agent for Homeland Security. He was making six figures a year. He, he That's why he says that. I'm taking it by his word. And I personally think, considering all these guys that appear on these um, CrossFit uh you know workout type you know these older white dudes who used to be a cia agent in the fbi i think personally that kind of job you can do until you're like in your late 60s what's the harm in cashing in a good fucking government paycheck every month and then when you're finished going on youtube and doing that for a bit why not from the company of your fucking lovely lake you know lakeview house somewhere in the middle of the fucking country chilling just picking up money why rush now when you're young this guy looks like he's probably under 40 there's no rush there's no rush you could easily be a field agent for a few more years and then do your youtube later and personally leaving you for fresh and fit is a fucking insane thing because this whole grift of like you know get, getting women getting fucking sex workers basically on your channel so you can kind of rip into them i personally think that grift has got a ceiling I personally think if Kevin Simons was still around, he'd have to pivot away from like getting girls on his live, live stream and just insulting them. There's only so far you can go with that content, in my opinion. I don't know if you guys agree, but I think that thing has a bit of a ceiling. If that's the truth, why leave your fucking Homeland Security job for that? Really? To just sh shout at OnlyFans girls? Like, is that really what you're doing for your life? Like, that's what you gave me up for. And then YouTube says, you know what? Get got. No more, de no more money for you. No more super chats. No more AdSense. You're done here. It's insane, insanely short-sighted. And and I haven't. I say I tell you guys that story to tell you that I haven't felt like that since today. And um, it sucks, guys. It really does suck. <laughs> um, you know, fortunately, we you know we made some moves etc you know and we kind of saw knew that the type of content that we make for us to be able to give you this content yes yeah, pick up every martinez yeah a gov job is amazing i'm trying to get one it's the best like we have some like honestly we have some i have some friends like i look back at some of my i look back at my early decisions when especially pre-uni and i kind of cringe i did the wrong thing right i went to a, i went to a really good university for arts central St. martins one of the best in the world all the best designers and stuff went there but the degree that i did was a waste of time because i don't practice it day to day i did fucking product design but i'm not a product designer i don't work in a studio you know i do other sort of random shit so i regret that if anything i would have preferred if i went to uni or if i did go to uni again i would have preferred to maybe done a uh, a vocation that involved getting a job afterwards yeah an education involved you getting a job where if it's a doctor or if it's something involved in stem or whatever it may be right that would have been something i would have probably done or even maybe even computer science but going down the art creative route is insane but there was a real group of people again I, at the time when we were young and I, i'm not afraid to say this like i remember back then at a the time when i was going to uni and my friends were kind of dropping out and going into do like you know plumbing or going to you know, going straight into like local government roles where you maybe work as a receptionist or you work here, you work there. You kind of laughed at them. You kind of looked down on them. I know I did. You thought you were smarter than them. You thought you knew more. And then later on down the line, these guys and girls who went off to do plumbing, being an electrician, all that sort of practical shit, or then started to work for the local government in like really, you know, regular jobs, being a receptionist here, whatever it may be. They're now making crazy amounts of money, way more money than I am. They had, they fucking bought a house. They have cars, right? Cars with, with an S at the end, right? Plural. And they fucking have children and shit. That's what I regret not doing because those government jobs, yes, they're hard to get, 
But once you have them, it's basically a job for life, unless you get fired for something silly. It's a job for life. So I regret being that arrogant and being that fucking prideful that my fucking shitty degree made me somehow better than these guys and girls who were going off to work for my local council. All right. Or like, you know, doing like, um, what's that thing called they were doing? Oh, I forgot what it's called. But I know some guys who like, essentially their job for the local council is they're the people that go to like council flats like imagine i think in america you call them um, projects and they basically check over and make sure that they're like compliant to certain fucking law to certain you know i don't know laws i guess in terms of like the building regulations they're on there when they basically get refurbished they do all that kind of stuff right um they do like site visits they file complaints for tenants if they have flooding and all that shit basically nine to five kind of boring but guaranteed money every single fucking month you're never gonna get fired it's a job for life it's insane and i look at myself going to fucking uni you know get myself into like crazy debt for fucking nothing and coming out of it and still working in the fucking shoe shop <laughs> you know what i mean it was a fucking waste of time really really was we have to it comes at a cost it comes at a cost dude. and it won't be here forever yeah yeah, and, and, and we you know, know Fresh always it. said this, you know, enjoy us while you can. Yeah. Uh, they thought we was capping, man. Yeah. They thought it was a joke. And, and you know, we did. Yeah, the, that's the one, Chris Hutch. Housing officer. That's the one. That's the role. I know a few of my friends that have that role, housing officer, and they are making money. So if you're out there and you're like r figuring out a place to go, if you can get a job in your local government or your local council working within those sort of fields, you know, town hall shit, whatever it may be, get it, get it job for life mate it's not sexy it's not cool but who gives a fuck make money stack your money and then do this cool stuff that's what some people don't understand too you can always do cool stuff and fun stuff on the side just make money and then on the outside take that money to do all the fun shit that you want to do it's not that difficult really we made moves on the side knowing that this could potentially happen and guys we, we the channel has been kicked off the youtube partner program just keep it straight with if you look right now you can't even super chat or you can't even remember. super chat right now yep uh, so this is the beginning of the end of this era. So we are in trolling chat. So yeah. yeah. So you you literally can't. Yeah, man. <laughs> so it's uh. So basically, we're we're gonna figure out what it, what's going on because we don't even really know all the details. Um, we're working with YouTube to try to come to a middle ground and you know work together and. Figure Yo, big up Evan Martinez. I appreciate it for the super chat, brother. Gov job is prob harder to get than being a YouTuber. I'm like you. I didn't try to get it when I was younger. I got an agility test for a gov job next week. Yeah, good luck to fucking, um, what you call it, Abby Martinez. Put prayer, prayer hands in the chat for Abby Martinez. Prayer hands in the chat for Abby Martinez that he gets this flipping, you know, he fucking, um, what you call it, speeds through this agility test for the government next week and he gets that fucking job and he gets fucking caked and paid up. All right? Prayer hands in the chat for Abby Martinez. Yeah, I agree with you. Honestly, like, I think it comes with age. I honestly think it comes with age. I can't say here that I wouldn't have done what, fresh and fit did but i'm just thinking in my personal opinion i just don't think a channel of theirs is worth dropping for that kind of guaranteed income considering the kind of role it is and also i don't know you could always do it on the side if you're i know he said already that they, he got called into the office that's what makes it difficult his government job called him into office and said hey you can't do youtube anymore um while working here fair understand that no problem um but then I would also say, long term, keeping your job is probably way more smart, especially at his age. He doesn't need to like do. He could, he could have easily got someone else to fill in for him, and um, let the other guy do the show, take up money from it still, do it, you know, be be the guy behind the scenes running it, and then when he retires or when he ends up leaving and stacking up his paper way more at the government job, then going back and taking a hot seat there. That's not that hard to do, but you know, whatever it may be. Um, just to end it because i don't want to keep rabbing on about this and kind of dancing on their grave because it is still sad you know i've i feel for them you know they're losing a big chunk of their income and they now have to kind of you know i don't know figure shit out and maybe get jobs and stuff whatever it may be i just think in my opinion i just can't understand why people who make the content that they make don't understand that there's always a ceiling for that especially on youtube like if Andrew Tate got kicked off, obviously Andrew Tate's a different story. Maybe Alex Jones even a different story, but I think those guys were killing it at a time, one time on YouTube. I feel like you should always expect your time is going to come. I think if I'm not mistaken, even Crowder, 
Lana Ricardo, I'm pretty sure, is demonetized too, but he just uploads videos on YouTube because it's a good marketing platform, right? To kind of um, have people go to your Rumble or to your Mug Club, whatever you're doing. So you can still kind of use it on that regard. But if you were making, like they were saying, they were making $40,000 on Super Chats per month, I personally think you have to be a little bit more protective of your platform. You can't be having Nick, like if you're making 40 grand a month on YouTube, no matter what your right wing fans say about you and they call you a sellout, you can't have Nick Fuentes on your platform. You can't have Nick Fuentes on your show if you're making $40,000 a fucking month. He's been blacklisted from every fucking social media platform that exists out there. Um, it just is what it is. His rhetoric is just too much for most of these platforms. I say let him say what he wants to say. It is what it is. The consequences are the consequences. But these platforms don't fuck with the guy. You can't platform it when you make that kind of money. It's just dumb. You know I mean, come on, use your brain. But again, they always have themselves to blame. Hopefully they figure it out and they can kind of go from there. But if you go on fucking Twitter, bro, like people are dancing on their graves. Like they are dancing on their graves. It kind of feels like when Kevin Samuels died. Like look at the memes they're posting on fucking Twitter. People are dancing on these guys' graves. Like they are really enjoying the fact that they've got fucking gadooshed, um, you know, from fucking the platform, right? They are really, really fucking loving it. Look at it. The end. Rola Tomasi is talking about it. Like, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. Look at this person. Um, seeing them fresh and fit clowns, uh, Tiva get packed up and point to tears is glorious. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I don't understand how you don't know people don't like you and this is going to happen. Like, that you're that oblivious to it. it makes no sense. Look at this. The fresh and fit fall was inevitable. You love to see it. Like, people are dancing on their graves on Twitter. Look at that. I just wrote, I just wrote fresh and fit. Nothing else in the search. Just fresh and fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't get it because i think in my head i think again maybe like self-awareness can be a little bit of a curse i sometimes think to myself like if i knew i was getting a lot of attention because people didn't like me i would also know that it could also go the opposite way and it could cause you maybe not to have a career anymore like i'd be okay with that too you know like you have to kind of realize how far this shit can go really but hey what what do, what do i know i'm not gonna keep talking about the shit anymore fuck it let's